This is a two-part question. So the first part is generating a signal when price crosses above the standard deviation number two upper line, generating a signal using the NinjaTrader's VWAP indicator when price crosses uh, the VWAP standard deviation upper line, a short position, right, is, is to be opened. And then the follow-up part to this question will be for tomorrow in tomorrow's uh, Blackbird workshop. And we'll, we'll show how to uh, set the stop loss at the standard deviation number three upper line. Uh, so this looks like I would categorize this as a counter trend uh, signal and system. Yeah. So we will generate the signals for the short position, right? We'll generate the signals for the short position and signals for the long position today. Uh, this would be pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And then tomorrow we'll use Blackbird to, um, to uh, es establish the stop losses and the profit target. So actually the profit target was left out for today, but we'll have the profit target part tomorrow. All right, so let's get, let me get um, the indicators on my chart. All right, so this is using NinjaTrader's order flow VWAP, and I'm just gonna use the default settings here. There you go, enable the auto scale for this indicator. Let's see, standard deviation bands three, yep, okay. All right, so I'm gonna try and locate um, some places on the chart where price actually crosses the second standard deviation. Here we go. All right, so there we go. There's a couple examples. Stretch that out like that. And there we go. All right, so now yeah, we've got a couple places where price crossed the, the upper second standard deviation for a short signal. And further back here, there we go. There's our second standard deviation line. Okay, so we got some uh, places to work with um, on the chart here. So next, let's get Bloodhound open and start building. All right, so um, all right, so you're to get Bloodhound open, right? There's a little button on the top of your chart uh, labeled empty template, right? Because we're talking, we're starting with a blank slate here, so to speak. Bring a blank canvas. I'm going to switch over to the logic tab here, but first I need to put a file name in here, right? We need to uh, name today's system here. So I'm going to hit the change button <clears throat> and let me use an older previous workshop name and let's just adjust the date. Uh, save. All right, so there we go. So we have a file name in here. So that's the first thing you want to do when you're starting a new system. All right, so let's hit, so we're on, on the logic tab and we need to hit the new button to create a new logic template here. I'm gonna call it CT for counter trend, VWAP as standard deviation two signals. There you go, something like that. And so simply put, right, we're looking for price to cross above or price to cross below, right, an indicator plot. So we're gonna use the crossover solver and I'm gonna connect it in here. Now, in the question, you know, it says when price. Well, you know, what exactly is, what does price mean, right? Because if we, you know, if you look at a price bar, there's four prices on every price bar, right? There's the open, high, low, and close price. You know, so you're gonna ask yourself, are you wanting the, a bar to close on the other side, right, of the indicator line? Or it, or does the wick, is, is the wick um, acceptable? So let's, here, let's, um, actually, let me undo this. Um, let me undo the scaling there. There we go. All right. So when we say price, you know, what is actually required? What are you considering as uh, which price is the requirement? You know, does the does the bar have to close or can a wick, does the wick count? 
All right. So if a wick counted, then we would be using the low of the bar, right? So if the low of the bar crossed, right, that could be one price. Or does the bar have to close on the other side, right? So you have to decide which price you actually want to use, the closing price or the higher or low of the bar, or maybe the open. You know, maybe you want the a bar to actually open on either side, right? So, but in this case, um, I know, um, let's see, who was it? Neil, so this was a question from Neil. Neil had clarified and said, you know, if the low, if the low or the high price crosses, right? So for this long signal here, um, right? So we're expecting a long signal here. So if the low of the bar crosses the VWAP line, um, that'll generate a long signal. And then if the high of the bar crosses, right, the upper uh, VWAP line, then that would be used for a short signal. So let's get Bloodhound back open. Right? And you'll notice that when I um, went into the indicator settings, right, and adjusted the VWAP indicator, it re that caused a reload on the chart. So if you do anything on the chart that causes a reload, um, that will force Bloodhound to close. Yeah, that will force Bloodhound to close as well. So you just have to hit the hit the button to open the Bloodhound interface back up here. So, um, and actually I can see, let's see, Neil is in the room and he's saying use the close price. Okay, so, so we're gonna, correction here we're actually going to use the closing price of the bar not the higher low so all right so for input a uh, we want uh, to use price right all right so there's the closing price of the bar right now if you wanted to use the high or the low price of the bar then for like for example right we're expecting a, a long signal here right so if we're using the low of the bar, you know, if the low price crosses the VWAP line, then for uh, a long, we would go and select the low price. And then for a short, we would select the high price. All right, but let's put those back to the closing price there. Okay, so now input B, that's gonna be our VWAP indicator. So let's go plug that in. And there we go, order flow VWAP. And now let's select which plots we're using. So um, for the standard deviation to upper, remember the upper, standard deviation to upper is for a short position. So there, for the short column, I would have the upper selected. And then we're using the standard deviation to lower for a long signal. There we go. That's all we had to do. Oh, and just make sure, <clears throat> right, that if you're using any kind of different settings here, like, you know, if you're changing your multiplier or using a different resolution, you know, make sure that these settings match the indicator on your chart. Uh, yeah, maybe you're using a different trading hours um, instance. And, oh, look at that. Hmm. That is blank, interesting. Well, yeah, it looks like Ninja might have changed something there, so it looks like we need a little uh, enhancement on that. Actually, actually, this whole interface is gonna get a big makeover um, in the next update, so. So, all right, so we have our, our plots selected here. Uh, so let's click OK. Now, um, you'll notice Right, we're getting a signal when price crosses, right? The close crosses above the VWAP, we're getting along, right? So we need to adjust our outputs here, All right? So normally with the crossover, you're looking for crossovers in, in the direction of a crossover. So when price crosses above, we're getting along. But remember, this is a counter trend. So we're actually kind of reversing the crossover directions here. Right, so we're looking for a long signal when when the closing price crosses down, uh, right? Um, yeah, crosses below. There we go. Price crosses below. 
So we need to reverse the outputs here. So we're going to do crosses against like that. All right. So now when the close crosses down, now we're getting a long signal there. And of course, we can see that we're getting quite a few crossovers here as price is kind of playing around with the, the second standard deviation line there. Anyway, so maybe we'll get back to that in a minute, but basically our uh, our logic is kind of done here. And let's um, give this solver a name here. All right, it's always a good idea to uh, name your solvers so you know what they're doing. Um, when you come back to look at, you know, your old Bloodhound templates, you know, maybe years later, maybe months later, you know, having names here is very helpful to remind you of what solver is doing what for you, for your system. All right, and let's just double check the short signals. There we go. There's the short signals. All right, so great. This part is done for the signal generation. And so let's, let me just point out here that, there we go, let's go back to all these long signals. If you use these signals in Raven or Blackbird, so for example, what is Raven and Blackbird here, right? So I'm in the strategies window here, and you'll see under shark indicators, right? So Raven uh, comes with Bloodhound uh, for free. It's a simple little strategy to do some simple backtesting. And then Blackbird is our um, secondary flagship product here. And so Blackbird is a more robust strategy here. But in, in any case, my point that I'm getting here is that if you're, you know, whether, whether you're using Raven or Blackbird, the strategy uh, will ignore all of these signals as long as a position is still opened, right? So for example, right, this first signal here will open a long position, right? And let's draw a line here, right? So here, that's our third standard de deviation line, right? So we'll have a, a stop loss sitting there. And let's just make this colorful. There we go, right? So we'll have a stop loss sitting there. And then, um, you know, and a profit target sitting there. So we can see here that, right, as price, you know, consolidates here, just kind of, you know, ebbs and flows. Right, we can see neither the stop loss would get hit, nor would the profit target get hit. Right, so we would have, there would be a long position open when all of these long signals occur. So they would all be ignored because there would still be an active long position still open. So Blackbird and Raven would ignore all of these long signals here right, as long as a long position is still open, you know, so you don't, so you may not necessarily need to clean up these signals here, right, so you just kind of have to evaluate your system on a kind of trade by trade basis, you know, determining do you need to remove some of these extra signals or, or maybe you don't here, but yeah, we can see here that price never comes down to hit the stop loss so a long position would be open the entire time here and then eventually it looks like yeah price gets comes up yeah it looks like there would be a long position open for quite some time yeah and even over here that stop did not get hit all right but if you know if you did need to clean your signals up then just to kind of give a quick quick suggestion here, most likely you'll want to use the signal blocker. All right, most likely. Again, it depends on, you know, there is no 
one answer for all ideas, right? It, it, it always comes down to the specifics of exactly what your trading idea involves, uh, you know, which can include, you know, your stop losses and your profit targets and things like that. So there's lots of, um, lots of variables, you know, when you're designing a system here. And so there's no single answer for, you know, all situations here, but most likely you'll want to use a signal blocker to clean signals up, right? So this is the easiest way to do that. So, all right, but for now we, we are basically done, um, done with this question, you know, as it's uh, written out there. Yeah, that's simply it, just one crossover solver. Um, and again, the key um, to getting these, you know, reverse, you know, quote, reversed signals here, the key was using cross crosses against direction, right? Because we're looking for a crossover in the opposite direction, right? So when you're getting a cross down, we're looking for a long signal. Right. Normally, you're looking for a cross up to get a long signal, but we reversed it, so we use crosses against direction, that output. All right, so that does it for this part of the question for today, and then tomorrow we'll implement, uh, we'll implement the stop losses and the profit target part. All right, let me just take a quick look at the Q&A window, see if there's any follow-up questions. Okay, no, it doesn't look like it. All right, guys, if I don't see you in tomorrow's workshop, then if I don't see you tomorrow, then have a great weekend. All right, bye-bye, guys.